In order to bring our bodies to a stop, we flex our muscles accordingly. In a car, the brakes perform the same function. To decelerate a moving car, the driver steps on the brakes, creating hydraulic pressure in the master cylinder at the base of the brake pedal. Supplementary power is required when the driver is unable to apply enough pressure to stop the moving vehicle. Hydraulic pressure and leverage from the brake pedal provide assistance to the driver. The vacuum booster also generates additional braking force. The vacuum booster uses a manifold vacuum to multiply the braking force supplied by the driver. The cylinder pushes out the brake fluid to each wheel via the brake hoses and pipes, activating the brakes. As a safety precaution against brake hose failures, hose systems are typically divided into two types. One type is a front-rear split, and the other is a diagonal split system that divides the circuit into an X formation. Brakes come in two types, drum brakes and disc brakes. Drum brake parts include the wheel cylinder, brake shoe, and shoe spring that are anchored to a backing plate and mounted inside the drum. The brake assembly is attached to the wheel. When the hydraulic pressure is transmitted to the wheel cylinder, the brake shoe is pressed against the rotating drum, causing the wheel to stop. This is the principle behind the tremendous stopping power of drum brakes. Because of their effectiveness, drum brakes are used in large trucks and buses as their main brakes. Drum brakes are also lighter than disc brakes, making them suitable for rear brakes and passenger cars. As cars gain higher performance and speed, so does the demand for safe and effective brakes that can decelerate and stop the vehicle under any condition. With its efficient heat dissipation and stable performance, the disc brake has grown in popularity. In a disc brake, pistons press brake pads onto the rotor to create friction. These parts are housed in an assembly called the caliper. The rotor rotates with the axle. To stop the rotation, the pistons press the brake pads against both sides of the rotor, squeezing it to a stop. Both drum and disc brakes use friction materials that wear out over time and must be replaced periodically. The parking brake keeps parked cars stationary using a cable mechanism without any use of hydraulic pressure. Some types use a handbrake lever while others are operated by foot. The parking lever uses a ratchet locking mechanism that only allows movement in one direction. The brake remains engaged until the driver presses the release button. Electronic control of the brakes allows for highly sophisticated brake performance. Sudden braking with excessive braking power can cause great danger by locking the wheels, extending stopping distance and causing loss of handling. To prevent this from happening, the anti-lock braking system, known as ABS, electronically delivers maximum stopping power without locking the wheels. The traction control system optimizes the brake pressure in the front and rear wheels to suit driving and road conditions. And the electronic stability control, known as ESC, improves safety by detecting and minimizing skids when encountering sharp corners and slippery roads. ESC also controls and monitors the engine and the steering system.